Good evening, Leif Spork here from the Spork Tile Art Studio just north of Sutton's Bay, Michigan. Uh, tonight we're working on Christmas ornaments. It's November 26th, 2018. And we have uh, a new ornament this year. It's going to be a press plant tile ornament. Uh, one of my best selling tiles, uh, uh, style of uh, tile that I make, uh, is uh, incorporates wild plants and flowers and Anything really flat that you can press into clay, and then uh, we burn out the the um, the organic material that's been pressed in the clay, and then we stain it with um, several different uh, colorants to leave a dry finish on the tile, and it uh, highlights the plant that's been pressed. And it's kind of this is this is an example of what we do, but this isn't quite finished. It's a, it's a, it hasn't been um, stained yet. But um, you can see the impression of the plant is there. So we uh, made three different type, three different shapes this year. We have a bell, a fish, and then I have a, just a basic tablet. Um, and as you can see, they, we ha I have already pressed the plants into them, and the clay was wet. That's, a, that's that's cedar there. This is a white pine needles. You'll see them better when they're stained. And then I did a couple wild roses. So, um, so these have been bisque fired, fired once, and now they're going to be stained and fired again. Uh, this is a kind of a messy job. <laughs> um, we're, we're not using traditional kind of glazes. We're using stains, and um, there's a few different types that I like to use. Uh, this is just basic. Water and iron oxide. Iron oxide comes in a, well, I get it in a 50 pound bag and it lasts about 20 years. And uh, it's used to make browns. Um, and it leaves kind of a nice, uh, when you stain plant uh, tiles with it, it leaves a nice brown toasted look. Um, let me show you. Um, iron oxide is, is, is how I sign the backs of the um, tiles I make. So, um, I'm basically watering down the iron oxide so it's not so dark, and then I'm staining the tile, and that uh, it uh, leaves a really cool, really cool look that um, is very popular. So this is my first time I, uh, I I had the idea to do it with ornaments. So in here we have the iron oxide. This is this is the basic way. When I first started making these press plant tiles um, ten years ago, uh, when I bought my press, um, iron oxide was the main color that I used. So I just put the powder in the cup, add some water. You can experiment with how dark or how light you like it. It also kind of depends on the type of plants you're pressing. Some plants are very um, are very uh, flat and have very uh, delicate patterns that um, don't leave deep impressions in the clay. So you have to be uh, gentle in how you stain them and then how you sponge them off. Um, other other plants have really deep impressions, like the cedar is a really deep impression. So it's really easy to stain these and have the plant um, show up. So uh, several ways of doing it. You can you can brush the iron oxide on. You can use a sponge and wipe the iron oxide on. Um, I have uh, discovered that what I like best is I like just putting water and iron oxide in the cup and then just Dipping the dipping the tile into it, so it's stained. Uh, it's not done yet, but this is how I do the initial staining. So you'll just see here. I just dip it. You can see the needles. And I like to I like to do both sides of the tile because um, it makes it look uniform when you're uh, you know the finished product will look uniform. Now these aren't these aren't done, these aren't quite done yet. We're going to sponge this iron oxide off in a in a minute. So in addition to the iron oxide, I've also uh, I also use a uh, cobalt uh, cobalt cobalt oxide, and I've also um, cobalt uh, cobalt oxide and iron oxide are the best. Uh, you're my favorites. Um, I've also used uh, nickel oxide, and I've used black iron oxide, and I've used 
Um, I've used chromium oxide, but uh, they don't. They leave, those uh, materials leave very uh, light light stains, and it's also very difficult to. Um, it's uh, not easy to keep the, uh, the 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 powder, the stain, the stain. <laughs> these these materials: iron oxide, cobalt oxide, chromium oxide. They're all powders, and um, the iron oxide gets into the pores of the clay really well. So does the cobalt. Uh, oxide and then it, it basically um, is vitrified or it melts into the clay and it it uh, it's permanent especially when you when you fire the clay to 2200 degrees or about 1200 Celsius uh, it it's iron oxide cannot be rubbed off however with the chromium oxide and the nickel oxide and uh, black iron oxide it it, uh, it doesn't melt into the into the clay as well and it kind of you can actually brush some of it off sometimes after it's been fired so I like using iron oxide and cobalt oxide the best you got to keep mixing this up good because the iron oxide is basically the iron and iron you know, iron wants to sink so heavy it's a heavy metal heavy metal um, all right so I discovered this new product with the local company that the I get some of this, some of my supplies from. It's a, um, they call it an interactive pigment. It's uh, from Georgie's Ceramics out of uh, Washington State. They have several different colors of these pigments, these interactive pigments. This one's called Winter Storm. You can kind of see how it looks there. This one here is called Indigo. Now these are these are cool. It's it's basically this one is like basically like the cobalt oxide um, let's angle this camera down a little bit so with this with this stuff um, you brush it on here's the rose it's very intense um, the cobalt oxide is a very um, strong material it doesn't uh, take very much for it to uh, it, it, it's a, it's a, it, a cobalt makes blue, so just a little bit of a cobalt oxide will really go a long ways. So as you can see, this kind of looks messy. That's okay. We're going to blend it in a minute. So I'm going to do a few of these in this color. good now we're going to do some of this winter storm now this one isn't quite as intense so this one I'm going to I'm going to try to coat this one a little bit a little bit more completely That works right in the bucket. Probably should have started doing that in the first place. I'm gonna get a couple more colors too. Just a second. Okay, this is a uh, one called Golden Straw kind of leaves more of a light brown or tan color. Make sure to mix these really good because a lot of these colorants, these cobalts and iron oxides, they like to, they like to sink really fast. Iron oxide is very inexpensive, but these uh, these store bought materials can be a little bit more expensive. So I, I try to 
I try to be more careful with um, uh, saving and you know, not wasting it. This is, um, it's kind of a wasteful, uh, you know, you end up, we're going to end up sponging these off and um, into a bucket of water. However, when the, when we're all done, the bucket of water, here's another color, color called tree bark, the bucket of water will have all this material that settles in the bottom. And I found that you can save that and then use that, like all these different colors, all, all, um, all kind of mixed together, creates a really cool stain. Um, so you can really save everything. Which, which is what I like to do. I like to save as much as possible. All right, so like what I was saying, so these are all, these here, let's get a little picture. These here are just stained iron oxide. These have the indigo colorant. Um, these have the, the winter storm and tree bark. So what's, what can be fun to do is you can just kind of add a little bit of different, d double up the colors. Um, mix it together a little. Um, it, it'll uh, leave it'll leave different um, you know different colors in the same piece of plant, and it really looks cool. Also, these different materials they affect the clay differently. For instance, cobalt has a way of like I can't explain it. It like it kind of like it causes the surface of the clay when it's fired to be smooth, and it almost gives it kind of a porcelain like effect it, it I don't know it's really I think it's really cool so um, we think uh, you know I think about that when I do this about uh, this, this is iron oxide the dark brown so again I'm just gonna I'm gonna dunk this into the excuse me that's the cobalt the black the dark black is cobalt I'm gonna dunk this into the bucket of iron oxide so we're doubling it up I'm going to do that with a few of these. Again, this is not something that, that you, need to, you need to be all worried about, you know, if, if you miss a little bit here or there, because we're going to be sponging this off. And it's going to get smeared all over, and, all, and it'll all end up being colored. So, see, that's good. bucket of water okay here's my bucket of water let me try to get this closer to the camera I've been using this earlier in the day for the same thing all right one of the important things about doing this, especially when you're doing lots of these, like there, there are times where I'll do like 500 of these uh, pressed plant tiles in a day at least. Um, you really want to use gloves because you'll just sandpaper your fingers. I don't mind getting this material on my fingers. Iron oxide, cobalt, these pigments are non-toxic. Um, it, it, it'll, stain, it'll stain your fingers for a couple days, but... That's not what I'm worried about. What I'm worried about is when we're when we're um, removing the excess stain, you can really just you'll you'll rub the skin right off your fingers and you'll have these burns and they they really hurt. So, got to use gloves. Um, let me find a sponge here. You can use a sponge. I I don't like sponges. Let me, let me kind of show you why. The sponge is really almost like kind of like a, it's almost like it's almost in my opinion it's almost like the worst 
for this job because it's like sandpaper kind of and it really takes the stain right off and you can see it, that looks really bright and white but you can see the needles um, however when we fire this uh, you'll, you'll notice that um, you want a little bit of stain coloring on the surface of the clay if, if you want at all it to be kind of a toasted kind of stained look this will probably stain uh, will fire in the kiln and come out almost looking not uh, unstained. You'll see the darkness in the needles, but the rest of it will look kind of white. So this is okay. Some of those are okay, but we don't want to do them all that way. So again, I wouldn't use a sponge. For a long time, I would just use my fingers. <laughs> and fingers are like your skin is perfect because it kind of like you can gently kind of rub the stain away, but you don't take it all off because your skin's really, uh, it's, you know, it's, um, it's supple, it's soft. It uh, doesn't scrape the material, the stain off. It, so gloves also work. Uh, so that's what I would suggest using, are gloves. So you just dip the tile in the water, get it wet, and, and I just like to go like this. I just kind of rub it all over my fingers. And then I just kind of, in my mind, I just try to thinking that I'm rubbing all the different surfaces. And I'm just kind of blending it around. And there. That's good. Okay, this is one that has some of the two different colors in it. Again, I'm just going to dunk it, get it wet, rub it around. So when I'm rubbing this around, I'm smearing that those those different stains. In the, I'm, 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 uh, I'm uh, moving it around. So it's... You know, it's being moved. So this is where you kind of have to get your own your own kind of creativity and style when it comes to staining these. You could call this finished, but it's kind of it's what I don't like about it is it's been it's kind of it's it's just kind of smudged in places. There's not a uniform of there's no uniformity or there's no uh, the smudges kind of look almost man-made. And the idea is to try to make it all natural looking, this, the staining. So what, what I do is, feel free to keep getting them wet. I just kind of want, after I remove the, the, the main surface of the stain, then I just kind of want to blend it. And I just use my fingers just to kind of rub it in a little bit. And then I'll just, I dunk it. And, the wet, and what I think about now is I think about, <laughs> think about panning for gold. If you ever watch a, someone panning for gold, they kind of shake the pan of gold and they and so what we're doing is we're imagining the surface of this with all these little micro uh, particles of iron oxide and the stain and we're just imagining we're, we're sifting them around like a pan of gold again in this one this iron oxide iron oxide is very strong so we can rub it around and smear it around and you'll learn that that's going to be good enough for this this that iron oxide for that color but but we want to get it into all the little the little grooves of the of the of the um and you see there you miss it sometimes and that's you know that's okay maybe you like that look but i personally so what's cool is you can add a little iron oxide so you'll have you'll have dark blue up here and we're going to have a little bit of brown down there and then you just dunk it a little bit careful though you see so easily the iron oxide can get uh washed away Again, it's, it's a kind of a skill a skill you kind of learn. So, you, and now we just kind of blend it in. So you kind of can you can kind of get a feel for what that's going to look like. It'll be it's going to be blue and brown. So that's going to be cool. Again, we'll do this again here, rubbing it all around. This is the rose. So leaves are a little bit different. A lot of times they're really delicate, and you have to be careful not to rub the stain right off of them. Um, however, other times, like this time, it doesn't seem to be it doesn't seem to matter. Leaf is very uh, clear. There's no smudging, kind of uniform staining around it. That's what I like. Again, we're just kind of rubbing it around, smearing it in, and we're letting the water kind of do the washing and then we just keep kind of playing around with it 
until we feel like it's just rubbing it around. That's, that's what I found is the best. That's going to be nice, cool. So we do that for all of them. Then we put them all on boards, sign them and date them.